Well, everyone, here we are. This is it. The final movie preview I will ever be doing um, on this channel. Um, very bittersweet. Very bittersweet. But we are ending it on a high note with talking about all the movies coming out within December uh, 2022. And uh, there's a lot of movies coming out that I'm quite excited for this month, as I typically am around the December time. Um but this one especially, I think, is is even more significant considering it is the last one. I'm glad that we're ending it on what looks like a very promising month overall. Um, but we are going to start off, for the last time, introducing both of my guests here. I only have two guests here with me. I was trying to get as many people as I possibly could uh, that have been on here before. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get everybody. But I'm very happy that I was able to at least get these two uh, to be on here because I love getting to have guests and collaborate and things like that. I'll, I'll get into that, of course, once we get to, you know, closer to the end of this and whatnot. But um, we're going to start off. I mean, you guys know her. You love her. Um, she, she, she's amazing. It's, uh, it's the, the amazing Allie. Uh, it's great to have you once again, um, as always. Hello, thank you for having me again. And also, I'm cold, so That's I'm great. sorry about that. that. <laughs> but then, unfortunately, with me is uh, somebody. She 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 always, says, she always says she's gonna watch the trailers. She she always says that this will be the time that it happens, and then it doesn't. But no, in all seriousness, uh, I can't think of a better way to close this out than having this person on because, like she's been with me on this segment since the beginning. There was a period of time when she was doing it by herself, like in 2015. <laughs> and the fact that we have her here uh, is very special. I'm very happy once again, for the last time on the movie preview, we do have Violet. Hello. You can't see me for, Oh um, yeah. Let me reason, do that. But now I am you. here. <laughs> there we go. Now I, there I am. Hello. I turn off audio avatar uh, yes. uh, because it's cool. Oh, wow, I say. Uh, so, yes, hello, everyone. It is me. Uh, hi. And so, um, as, as, as usual, I am not prepared for this, but, you know, yeah. I was saying to myself that it's kind of just the running gag, so we'll just we'll let it go for one more time. And, yeah, no, I don't know. It's just kind of crazy because, like, um, you know, recently I've actually been coincidentally, like, reflecting a lot on, like, my childhood and stuff. Uh, yeah. Just because, like, it kind of it hit me the other day that I turned 20 in a few months and Oof, uh, crazy. i know and so like it's kind of like like to me like i consider becoming an adult at 20 like honestly like, this person how i feel and so like i've just been kind of like reflecting on a lot and, and like you know like obviously like the movie preview was something that like i haven't put admittedly like as much of like my all into as i used to back in like 2015 especially mm -hmm. Um, uh, but you know, like, like you mentioned, it's like one of the first things that we really like did creatively together besides like our television yeah. reviews. Uh, okay, and I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of, you know, crazy. This is like, you know, this is it. Uh, but I'm glad to be here. Uh, so thank you again for having me on for the last one. And, uh, yeah. Yes, of course. It's always, it's always great to have you on. Uh, but either way, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, with the first movie. Now, if you don't know how the last movie pre how the last movie preview works in every single month, I introduce all the movies um, and then my guests give their thoughts on the uh, films and whatnot. But we're gonna start off here, starting off with a actual Christmas movie, which we haven't had a Christmas movie major release in theaters in a very long time. And thankfully, we have one coming out right at the beginning of the month. And that, of course, is Violent Night. Excuse me! We decided that you could have one gift. Early. What is it? That is a direct hotline to Santa Claus himself. I can talk to Santa. All right, revelers. Welcome to your worst Christmas ever. Let's go! You have $300 million in your personal vault. That's what I want for Christmas. <laughs> okay, so Violent Nights, look, I will say right off the bat, 
is this a movie we have seen quite a few times before of like the 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 you know the killer like badass santa who's who's taking out all these people one by one in like bloody gruesome fashion yes we have seen that but oh my god this looks so much fun uh, i think the thing that really seems to work about this trailer is that it seems like this is a movie where they know exactly what it is they know that this is not a movie that is going to be anything too crazy they know this isn't a movie that's going to be anything like you know really over the top or like they, they know this isn't a movie that's going to be anything like you know very deep or anything like that this is just a really silly christmas movie and i hope that's exactly what it is david harbour i think is perfectly cast here i think he's gonna do a really good job as the real Santa seemingly who nobody seems to believe that he is but he has this like edge to him I think there's a lot that he can bring to the role John Leguizamo I'm also very excited to see what he ends up doing um in this film and the action sequences themselves I mean look like it's going to be a very um generally thrilling movie in terms of action sequences so i'm excited to see how that plays out but like i said i think the comedy is just very on point here very much seems like the kind of movie where they know what it's going to be and they very much are pulling out all the stops and i think as a result this is going to be a really fun time i'm very much looking forward to this one but ali what do you think about this one um i mean honestly i don't really have a ton to say about it but it does look really mm -hmm. interesting it looks fun Sorry. Um, I apologize for my cold. Yeah, but, you're good. Um, you're good. It does seem like a really interesting and intriguing movie. Um, I never really knew much about it <laughs> prior. Mm -hmm. Um, I just watched all the trailers. Um yeah. and I mean obviously I've seen a few of them prior, but I was still watching them all. Um, but yeah, this one seems honestly, this one just seems like a very like fun little Christmas movie and very feel good. Yeah. Well, I don't know about feel good, uh, but yes. Oh, it uh, does. Violet, what do you think? But it also looks very violent. Yes. Well, listen, uh, there's, uh, listen. I have two, 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 two uh, moods in mind. I love my wholesome Christmas stuff. Love it. And then you have stuff like this that can, that I also love. Uh, this I am actually very excited for. I have not seen the trailer for this. I've seen like only TV spots for it, but. It seems like it's something that's pretty up my alley. I did, I did watch some reviews actually for this also, and it does seem something like that I would enjoy. Um, I'm gonna try to see this in RPX, and uh, hopefully I have a, a very fun time at the movies. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I also agree with you that David Harbour is like looks great on this. So yeah. Yeah, he does. Uh, so yeah, Violent Night, if you're looking forward to it, comes out on December 1st. I actually December 2nd. I'm very much looking forward to this one. I think it's it's going to be like a, just a really wacky and different kind of Christmas movie that we just don't get to see very it often. Very, I, um, it feels very quirky. Yeah, it does seem very quirky. I've heard a lot of people say it feels kind of like... like it, feel, it kind of feels like an early 2000s type Christmas movie, and I'm, I'm very excited to, to see how this one turns out. Uh, but switching gears entirely, we go from just a really fun sort of action, you know, holiday blockbuster to a far more deep and uh, artsy type film with Johanna Hogg's next film, The Eternal Daughter. Are we the only people staying here? I don't know. There was a sound, I'm sure other people have mentioned it to you. Mom? That's strange, because nobody else has mentioned anything at all. You brought her here. Memories flood back in this place. Quietly in the evening, through the building and on the grounds. Hello? And I suppose it is a way of staying in touch. So let's talk about this one because Joanna Hogg is a director that I've honestly been very hit or miss with. Uh, admittedly, I've only seen two movies from her, The Souvenir and The Souvenir Part 2, respectively. The first Souvenir, I wasn't a big fan of. I really just found it to be not super engaging. It was following characters that I just had a really hard time investing in. But the second one, I enjoyed considerably more. It did a really good job of showing how life imitates art and kind of how you can use art as a coping mechanism to uh, recover from, like, you know, toxicity city within your life and things like that i thought souvenir part two did a, did a much better job of kind of showing what hog was trying to do with um 
those films overall. And so when it comes to The Eternal Daughter, yeah, I definitely have quite a bit of interest in this film. It seems very different. Uh, the whole story of, you know, basically this hotel that's haunted by its mysterious past. And we see this artist and her elderly mother are, are talking about all these like buried secrets in their former family home. But the twist is both characters are played by Tilda Swinton. So yeah, a majority of this movie is basically Tilda Swinton talking to herself. And I mean, that sounds fucking amazing because it's Tilda Swinton and she's one of the best actresses uh, out there and in my opinion she really can do no wrong so that alone is enough of a selling point I do have to say beyond that this doesn't really seem like something that uh, I'm that interested in I'm hoping that this is more than just Tilda Swin talking to herself I'm hoping that it has a little bit more going on than that because from the trailer it does seem like that's kind of just the appeal here and I, again I do think Hogg's directing looks really strong it's more of a you know gothic horror type approach and things like that and I, I think she's really going going to uh, deliver in that way. Um, but overall, like, it, it does seem like a movie that I hope turns out to be really good. I'm just not quite hooked yet. We'll, we'll have to see how this one turns out. But what do you guys think? Um, I mean, I literally just found out about this one. Like, I never really knew anything about it at all. Um, I mean, Olivia Colvin's a great actress. But yeah, like, I kind of agree with you on this. Like, I feel like this one could just be very hit or miss. It could be like mm -hmm. really good or it could be really bad or just really boring kind of thing. So like we'll see. I mean hope I mean I'll probably watch it at some point, but um hopefully it proves me wrong because I always love to be surprised. But other than that, that's like my main thought. Personally, I mean, I don't know too too much about this one, admittedly, but just from like the cat obviously, you know, Tilda Swinton is one of the best uh, actresses working, I think, ever. I think she's one of the best actresses of all time um and obviously from like the director and production and cast uh like i i, I think it's something that's going to be worth checking out it does sound really interesting to me personally uh and i will say if anyone is gonna carry a film that's mainly uh them i think Tilda Swinton can do that so I'm, I'm looking forward to it all right uh so yeah if you're looking forward to the eternal daughter um it does come out on december 2nd uh the next one we're talking about here is another possible oscar contender of sorts um and that is spoiler alert my name is michael you're a great dancer you're a terrible liar and that's kid i've always imagined that my life was like a typical romantic comedy you were so confident I mean, you just sweeped off your clothes like you're a stripper at a bachelorette party. And I basically shower with clothes on. I'll just shut up now. Shall we go to your place tonight? Here's my door. Before we go in, just open the door. Okay. What is this, Michael? Oh, you don't want to... Oh, my God, they're in here, too. Oh, Papa. You turn my sixes to nine. Okay, so spoiler alerts. Uh, this one I kind of came out of nowhere for me. Um, the only thing I really knew about this one before, like the trailer came out, was that Michael Showalter was directing it, and it was centered around uh, a figure from TV Line, like you know that that site that doesn't really exist anymore. Um, that used to do like a bunch, and I, I remember this guy. Like I used to watch like videos of this guy, him talking about like shows that came out and things like that. So I was like, okay, that's pretty intriguing. But this film is centering more on like his personal life and uh basically like the final 11 months of um his partner's life and you know his whole you know diagnosis with, with terminal cancer and things like that and I think that definitely could be very effective in that way Jim Parsons seems like he's gonna give a really strong performance here this just looks a little too schmaltzy to me like I just can't this this just looks like a very cheesy sort of romantic drama it doesn't really seem like it's doing anything that different from other better films that we've seen um I do think that there's definitely some talent there Michael Showalter is a fantastic director and I think he's gonna do a good job here just overall this just looks kind of mad to me I've seen this trailer plenty of times and it just hasn't really hooked me in um again I like everyone that's involved but it just doesn't really seem like anything terribly interesting we've seen this premise before and we've seen it done a lot better and it just doesn't seem like this film is doing anything that different than than what we've seen so unfortunately i can't really say i'm all that excited for this one um i actually disagree um when i was watching the trailer i actually kind of enjoyed it like mm -hmm. i'm kind of i think it's just gonna be like very wholesome just really fun i mean i hope hopefully it's not very cheesy but like 
I actually yeah, I assume it's going to be sad as well, considering the <laughs> yeah. subject matter. That too, yeah. But I feel like it will be very like wholesome. I do think it'll be pretty good. I hope. I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously, I can't predict the future, but like, I'm I actually am pretty excited for this one. <laughs> I think the thing is like when you're having a film that like has like a subject matter like this, like like a narrative like this, like and the the tone it's trying to go for. It's kind of mm. it's very hard to pull off, but um, yes. I think I, I think it it, it looks um, compelling enough uh, and engaging enough to work, um, and it is something that I may actually go see because I know this is a, this is a wide release, um, so I uh, may go uh, check it out. So I, I am looking forward to it. All right. So spoiler alert: if you're looking forward to this one, it does come out on uh, December uh, December second. Uh, it does expand next week on December eighth. So we will see how this one does turn out. The next one, on the other hand, is one that I have been looking forward to for quite a bit now, and it's finally coming out, and I'm very excited for it. And that is Women Talking. Where I come from, where your mother comes from, we didn't talk about our bodies. We were given two days to forgive the attackers before they returned. We hardly knew how to read or to write, but that day, we learned how to vote. Do nothing. Stay and fight. Wait. Leave. If we do not forgive these men, we forfeit our place in heaven. Okay, so Women Talking, uh, this is a film I have heard so much about uh, coming out of like film festivals and things like that. So many people have been saying that like this movie is going to be, you know, one of the possible front runners for Best Picture. This is one to watch out for. And yeah, I mean, just based on this trailer alone, this seems like such a emotional ride. Uh, the premise itself is one that just really intrigues me. The idea that you have this th these women and they're in this religious colony and you know basically finally taking the time to just you know finally just let out their thoughts about the all the terrible things that have happened to them and all these you know various sexual assaults and things like that and it seems like it's going to handle it in a very delicate and, and tasteful manner um I think when it comes to the cast here, everyone seems like they're going to kill it. I have heard so many things about, especially Claire Foy and uh, Jesse Buckley. No surprise with Jesse Buckley because she kills it in fucking everything. Um, but I'm very excited to see how this one does end up turning out. Um, I think that there is... Uh, I think this is going to be a very hard hitting film and it's definitely not going to be an easy film to watch, but it's one that I am very excited for. Other thing I want to talk about the color palette of this film. Very distinct, very distinct. I know for some people who watched it like during film festivals, they said it kind of took them out. I actually really dig it. I feel like it gives this film a very like cold and almost uh, more authentic look. Like this is very much what this would look like in this colony and things like that. And also just the idea that like this is 2010, like you watch, you watch the time period and things like that. You would think this is like, you know, from years ago, but no, this literally takes place in 2010. I mean, there's so much that this film is clearly trying to say, and I think it's really going to sell it all very well. I'm very excited to see how this one does turn out. Sarah Polly is a director that I admittedly have not seen like a ton of her stuff um but i've heard she is like you know a very overlooked director people have said that like this is really going to be her chance to like finally get the recognition that she's deserved um and so i'm very excited to see how this turns out um i think this is going to be potentially one of the best films of the entire year it's absolutely on my list of like films that i need to see before you know i make a best of list or something like that and i, I just really hope it ends up living up to the hype because it really looks like something very profound um and i'm, I'm very interested in seeing how this one turns out yeah honestly me too just like from watching the trailer just like a few minutes ago kind of thing well um it does i kind of agree with you on this i echo you there um it feels like it's going to be like a hard watch, but I, it's very intriguing. Um, I'm definitely very excited to watch it. I um, don't have a ton to say about some of these, but um, this one definitely seems like it'll be just very intriguing. Yeah, no, this is one that I definitely want to see. I mean, any like major awards contender I definitely want to see, but this one I think right. just given 
given the um, sincerity of the of how it's tackling the subject matter um, yeah. and that like authenticity that is needed for something like this and not romanticizing it. I, I think that with also giving it its own like unique artistic flair with like the color timing, for example. Um, I think this is one that is going to be an obviously like an important one to see, but also definitely um, one that I think for films that are trying to tackle like subject matters like this, just from what I know and like what I've seen from this film, it seems like this is like a film that like this is how you should do it. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. All right. Uh, so if you guys are looking forward to women talking, uh, it does come out on December 2nd. It's going to be expanding um, within the week of Christmas, um, and then it's expanding more in January. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this one's release. They kind of changed it at the last second, so I'm still kind of confused as to like how you know how limited it's going to be and how wide it's going, but we'll really just have to see. I really just hope I'm able to see it before the year ends. If not, I hope to see it like you know first two weeks of January, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, and then the last movie we're talking about coming out for this week, at least, um, is one that I've been kind of interested in for quite a bit, and that is Senior. Robert had an idea of doing a documentary about his dad and about their life together. So many people, they know Robert Downey Jr., but they don't know Robert Downey Sr. He's a talented underground filmmaker named Robert Downey. Have you seen any of Grandpa's movies? No, why? Because they're awesome. Do you want to see them someday? Do people try to ascribe meaning to your movies? Oh, my God. I hope not. So, uh, as usual, we don't talk about a lot of documentaries um, on this channel, but we try to save them for the really special ones. And this one, to me, does seem quite special. You know, you have Robert Downey Jr., and he's making this documentary about his dad because he feels like his dad is not quite as uh, respected in terms of his films and he wants people to kind of shed light on his respect and kind of like the legacy that he ended up um you know cultivating and whatnot and i think this is going to be a really effective documentary it's going to be very eye-opening when it you know comes to you know robert downey senior who i admittedly don't really know a lot about so i think this film is going to provide insight on that very well but also seems like this film is made from a genuine place of heart like this isn't this is something that you know uh Downey Jr's been wanting to do for a long time and now he finally has like the space to do it and I, I just really hope it ends up working out for him I like the black and white cinematography I like seeing the interplay between these two this just seems like a really wholesome documentary and I, I think it's gonna be a very very uh interesting watch for sure oh yeah um I mean you know me I love my wholesome watches <laughs> yes. um, oh, yes. yeah I definitely don't have a ton to say about this either but like um I'm, ex I'm just very stoked to watch it. Um, hopefully it interests me. And yeah. <laughs> you know, this is one that I definitely want to see, obviously. Um, and I think that it's an awesome documentary idea. And I look forward to seeing it. All right, so Senior, you guys are looking forward to it. Um, it does come out on December 2nd. Uh, very much looking forward to this one quite a bit. Now, the next movie we're talking about is one that I've been intrigued in for a long time, and it's finally coming out, and I'm very excited that it is. And that, of course, is The Whale. You don't stay in touch with Mom? She really only tells me things about you. Why? Because that's all I want to know about. Why'd you gain all that weight? Someone close to me passed away, and it had an effect on me. You haven't seen her since she was eight years old, and you're going to reconnect with her? Sorry. I don't like this. This isn't a good idea. I'm sorry. You say you're sorry one more time, I will shove a knife right into you. I swear to God. Go ahead. What's it going to do? My internal organs are two feet in at least. <laughs> Okay, so The Whale, look, right off the bat, I know this film has had quite a bit of controversy from people who don't really know the source material. A lot of people have accused this film of being, like, fat phobic and things like that. And, look, I don't know, like, a ton about the source material, admittedly. I know some things of what happens. I've seen, you know, excerpts of the play and things like that. I've seen scenes and whatnot. Um, but from what I'm gathering from this film, they handle it in a very tasteful and very delicate manner. And they don't try to, you know, they, they don't try to in any way sort of, um, you know, fat shame the main character. They really handle it in a very, um, you know, they, they really handle it in a very, um, 
you know, authentic way. And I'm very interested in seeing how that's all going to play out. But the, the film itself, I mean, this just seems like such a emotional and, and tragic watch. Uh, everybody's talked about Brendan Fraser's performance, how like this is the performance of the year. Nobody is ready to see what he's going to do. Everybody's saying he's the front runner for best actor. Obviously, I'm excited just based on that alone. I mean, the fact that Brendan Fraser is is finally, you know, getting the praise that I think that he has been severely lacking um for for years it, it's just amazing to see this comeback for him and i think it's really going to uh it, it's really going to pay off in dividends uh, especially if he does end up getting all the awards that people think he's going to get i i think he's he's going to go very like i think he's really going to have that resurgence that he's been hoping for and I, I hope it works out for him but then of course you have other actors in here like han chow i'm very excited to see what she's going to do i've heard a lot of praise about her performance sadie sink i'm very excited to see what her role is in this movie um i think she's really going to uh kill it here as sort of this very resentful daughter um towards his character and so i'm interested in seeing what really goes on there this just seems like a, again another very hard-hitting film it's not going to be an easy watch in any way but it is one that i am so intrigued to see i love how little the trailer does reveal and i think they do just enough at, at piquing your interest you know when he talks about how like people are amazing and things like that and you can see you know the state that this character is in um i really think this film is going to handle it uh very well i'm very interested in seeing how it's going to turn out like i said it's not going to be an easy watch in any way but i think it's going to be a very effective and very very memorable one for sure definitely one of the most anticipated uh of the entire month um i'm actually like super excited for this one as well like i adore sadie Singh. like she's one of my favorites in like stranger things and everything um so i'm very excited to see her in this and um just like I feel like th this will be a really hard and tough watch as well but I'm like it's probably one of the ones I'm like most excited for actually and it will I feel like it's gonna be a good one I don't I, hopefully it's not bad because I mean I would be just very sad <laughs> about that but I do have high hopes for this one and yeah yeah so this one's an interesting one for me because like as someone that has like uh pretty bad like binge eating issues and like has like bad like body image issues like i've 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 read a lot of what like heaven was talking about like controversy and like i i yeah. think like at the end of the day like i think people are worried that this film like not so it doesn't it's not about like romanticizing like obesity or like eating you no. know, like, disorders or something like that i think i think people are just really concerned and go, like or maybe going about based off like maybe some like interpretations of their own of like the play that like it, it it's like you know fat it, like fashion but like more so like treating someone that is you know quote unquote obese as like just as human because like they're just as human yeah. as, any, as everyone else like you know everyone you know has you know differences and um you know, like everyone, you know, is is like human in their own way, and like, and, and unfortunately, like, 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 oh, like people like who have eating issues or are are like are obese, like a lot of times get treated by society as like lesser than that, and that's something that I think, that's, from what I know, like this will explore, but also like it's not like um, encouraging that; it's very much like anti that because you know, like for me, like you know, eating issues is as much of an addiction as anything else can be um and it's a it's very very hard and a lot and people who haven't gone through it don't quite like understand um because it's it's a unique like addiction in the sense that like you know you need food to like survive um so like it's it's really really challenging and that's not to like demote over like addiction and stuff because i'm not saying that but i'm just saying like it's like it is just as challenging and a lot of people don't realize that and like but from what i know i think this film is going to handle those subject matters with the delicacy that it needs um and the, the cast of this film is absolutely like incredible uh and obviously like the whole talk of like brendan frazier um you know i'm obviously excited to see his performance and public awards thing like you know that will come you know later hopefully but uh i just want to see his performance first um and obviously darren Ar arifnowski uh i've only seen two of his films um, I've seen Black Swan, which I think is fantastic, and then Mother, which uh, I do not like that film. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna try to watch like The Fountain, and I got, actually just got the DVD for Pi a few days ago recently, and obviously Recommend for a Dream, which I haven't seen. So, um, you know, I'll try to get through all of those uh, before, uh, and then maybe uh, Kevin's favorite Noah. 
And so, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm very much looking forward I've to I've never this. even uh, seen that one. <laughs> yeah, I know you haven't, but like, and so, and I'm kind like, of fine never seeing it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but, and, uh, and one thing also, because I'm sure Kevin was going to mention it, uh, this is not going wide on the nine. No, it's not. I'm like it's. I thought it was, and now I'm not sure exactly when it's expanding. Um, yeah, I um, I looked. There's a theater in Boston that isn't getting it until like yeah. either the 16th or like Christmas. So I have no idea. So yeah, it might be one that we see together, Kevin. I'm not sure. I mean, that'd be great uh, for sure. Oh, the other thing I did forget to mention. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Is yes, Darren Aronofsky. Uh, the first film he's directed since Mother. Very excited to see um, him direct a film once again. I really feel like he's director, like when he's at his best, he tackles, you know, human issues very well, the human condition, um, sort of like, you know, our obsession with things and things like that. Requiem for a Dream is like one of my favorite movies. It's a movie I won't watch very often, but it's one of my favorites in terms of just the subject matter it covers and, and things like that. I I've always just really admired him as a director. And no, he hasn't always worked for me, but when he works, he really works well and i'm hoping the whale can be uh another really great film from from aronofsky overall but we'll really have to see how this one does turn out um you know we've heard so much about it i just really hope it ends up being something special because it certainly looks like something special from the marketing and all of the uh feedback we've heard from various film festivals um so yeah, I again, I'm not entirely sure when this is going wide or when it's expanding, but it comes out December 9th, and that's all I know at this point. Uh, we will see what happens from there, but if you're excited for The Whale, that is when it comes out. But also coming out on December 9th is another movie that I have been very much anticipating for a long time, and that is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Over there! What is that? Papa! <gasps> It speaks! He's just a puppet! No, I'm not! I'm a real boy! People are sometimes afraid of things they don't know. I don't understand! Okay, so here's the thing. Pinocchio as a property is very overdone. Yes, I feel like that is a very easy statement to say. We literally had four Pinocchio adaptations just this year alone. Like, it's fucking insane uh, that we had so many Pinocchio adaptations this year from, from this one to Father, When Can I Live to Be on My Own, Pinocchio, to the- It's Leave to Be on My Own. Oh my God, what? Kevin, gotta get it right. I'm, I'm sorry, Streisand effect. I apologize. Um, but uh, and then the fucking Disney Pinocchio, which was an absolute piece of shit. But the one that always has excited me is Del Toro's. Uh, not just because of how much I absolutely adore Del Toro as a director, but how much I feel like he can do something different with this story. And that's exactly what it seems like he's doing. Um, it seems like he's doing a great job of of taking the story that we all know and kind of putting his own little spin on it. Something a little bit darker, something a bit more twisted. He's going to go in some really different directions. Like, for example, I love the idea that Pinocchio is literally just made of wood. Like, he's literally just wood. Like, there's no, there's no humanistic features to him. It, everything looks so much more lifelike in that way. I like uh, what they're doing with Jiminy Cricket here. You know, it really seems like they're doing something distinctly different different with this take that we have not seen before and i think it really is going to pay off for them and my god the animation just looks absolutely magnificent here all of it looks so detailed all of it looks so well designed the textures and things like that i i just love all of it um and all the reviews for this has just got me that much more intrigued especially the fact that this is a musical i did not know that was the case and that definitely has me uh very excited um Ooh. this just looks so like imaginative and so endlessly creative and i'm just really excited to see what del toro is is able to do i feel like this is the way you do an adaptation you don't just try to do what we already know you really try to put your own sort of spin on things and it really seems like del toro is trying to do that here and considering how how he as a director is always trying to you know push the boundaries of cinema and tell these like you know really fascinating 
all, you know, usually very dark stories. I, I'm just really interested to see what he's going to do with this adaptation. It looks very different from anything we've seen before, and I think it's really going to end up uh, paying off well in the end. And what a cast as well. I mean, even McGregor as as Jiminy, as like, not Jiminy Cricket, but this film's version of Jiminy Cricket, I mean, that, that's all you need to know. Like, the fact that he's playing uh, Sebastian J. Cricket has me so excited. I can't wait to see what he's going to do. Christoph Waltz, um in this movie i i'm excited to see what he's gonna do tilda swinton finn wolfhard ron perlman kate blanchett i mean what an incredible john taturo what an incredible cast here overall um i think everyone really is going to kill it in this film this is easily not just my most anticipated of the month it's been my most anticipated of the entire year and i'm just very excited that uh it's finally coming out really hope this ends up uh living up to the hype for me because this really looks like something special Oh yeah, um, this is another one that I'm really excited for this month. Uh, just it looks super creative, innovative, and just like like the animation looks really great, and it looks so much better than the other one that was just out. Oh God, Ooh. minus the Pleasure Island sequence, that was a good <laughs> moment. Everything else was. Blech. Yeah, this one definitely like lives up more, like lives up more to the hype, but like better, more high expectations. Um. And, like, I'm excited for a musical because I love them so much. So oh, yeah. I'm very excited about that. Uh, so, yeah, this is definitely one I'm, like, super stoked for. Yes, now we turn over to somebody who who definitely has not seen this movie before. And has yeah, no, I have not seen this movie, say, movie, A lot of anticipation. Yeah. She's waiting yeah, no, with actually, bated breath to see this movie. Yeah, no, I've actually, I've actually never heard of this movie. Uh, well, oh. I actually don't even know who Del Toro is. Oh, um, damn. So... I saw this film in theaters on Thanksgiving because it was playing at the Coolidge in Boston or Brooklyn. It's basically Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and so much um, <laughs> what was that? I hate you so much for that. Uh, well, listen, I, this is like like my like four for for most anticipated film of the entire year. Uh, so I definitely wanted to see it in theaters. Uh, and I was <laughs> did say, I. Yes, I will say I don't love it as much as like most people seem to be, which is not which is not a bad thing. It just, it just for me, it isn't on like that same like oh my god kind of level. Um, but it is a great film. Um, I will say the whole time I was watching it, I was like, Kevin, you're, you're like Kevin. This movie might be an A plus for you. Like, like you're oh, going to okay. you're going to love this movie. Like. Like, because I said this after I saw Pan's Labyrinth, and you can say it's about multiple Del Toro films, and this is very much like, I'm 14, this is deep kind of statement, but, like, <laughs> Del Toro finds the nightmare in the fairy tale, and he does the same exact thing in this movie, and this movie is really, really dark. Like, mm-hmm. um, like I don't know, like, I hope people don't know, like, what exactly, like, the story is formatted like in this, but it's very dark, um, and it tackles, like, some really, really deep and complex social themes, um, and I think it does it very effectively. Um, and the animation is stunning and gorgeous. And also the sound design is also fantastic. Uh, and and since people have been talking about it, uh, it you know, it's a little bit of a spoiler BS. It, it is a musical, uh, but the music in it is absolutely lovely. Um, I, I, it's really cute. Uh, and uh, yeah, and this movie also is actually pretty funny. Like there's there's one gag that like is kind of like a recurring gag, that's all I'll say, that I thought was really adorable and funny. Um, and Pinocchio in this movie is so cute. Um, and uh, yeah, no, and everyone's great in the film too. Uh, and so, yeah, so I, I recommend it to everyone when it comes on Netflix. Uh, it should look gorgeous on Netflix. And also, if you can see it in theaters, uh, it is still playing in theaters. Uh, so oh. uh, go check it out if you can. So yeah. G- good good for those that can. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those uh, lucky few, but if you're <laughs> yeah, looking forward to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and you haven't seen it in theaters like somebody else on here, um, uh... it does come out on December 9th. Listen, I shouldn't be talking. I've already seen, this happens <laughs> like every fucking month. I'm like, oh, I've seen this movie before, but this is the one time that has not happened. <laughs> just, so... just, just wait till the end of the video. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Uh, so excited for this one. Really can't contain uh, my excitement for it. The next film we're talking about is definitely an interesting one. Um, it's a movie that I kind of forgot was coming out this year. And then they put out the trailer and I was like, oh yeah, this movie. And actually it seems like it could be very impactful. And that is Emancipation. Slaves are free. We must get to Baton Rouge. Through this swamp. Lincoln's army is there. 
There are many ways to die in a swamp. Okay, so getting this out of the way right now. Yes, this movie, I think, definitely would be a much different conversation for a lot of people if what happened at the Oscars this year did not happen. Because obviously, Will Smith has that 10-year ban unjustly for some people, maybe justly for some. We're not going to get into that whole thing. But um, yeah, I obviously this film, because it's coming out, you know, a lot of people said he probably would have gotten nominated for an Oscar and things like that. And I don't know if that's really going to happen. But yeah, I mean, he looks pretty incredible in this. This looks like a very transformative performance for Will Smith. He is definitely giving a much different performance than we've seen from him in other films. And I those have always been like the most impressive Will Smith performances in the the ones where he's able to kind of do something different and not just be Will Smith. And it seems like that's what's happening in this film. And I'm I'm very interested in seeing how this is going to be. Once again, this is probably going to be a very hard watch considering the subject matter it's dealing with. I mean, we're dealing with... Um, the slave who was nearly beaten to death and was able to escape um, because of, you know, was able to escape and things like that. And the whole film is kind of like, you know, chronicling him, you know, trying to escape and get justice for what happened and whatnot. And it seems like it's going to be a very hard watch in that way, but it seems like it's going to be a very effective one. I really just hope this turns out to be a very good film. Antoine Fuqua is a great director, but he has not been making the greatest movies lately. He really has not. And so I hope that this is a really good sort of comeback for me because I, I think he is a really strong director he tackles a lot of social themes very well um but lately he's been making things like the equalizer 2 which like is just like a fucking throwaway movie and I hope that's not what this turns out to be I hope this is something that is a lot more effective I hope this is a you know really big like sort of comeback of sorts for Fuqua can kind of you know get kind of him going back to his roots in a sense and I, I hope that's what this turns out to be um I think this looks like a very effective film and yeah uh we will see how this one turns out but what do you guys think um i literally knew nothing about this movie until i just watched the trailer um i mean i feel like this could be another like hit or miss like i kind of agree with you like i on what you were saying um like hopefully it's effective hopefully it's not hopefully it's actually well done hopefully it's good um i don't have a ton to say about this one but I just, I'm really just like, I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, I will say, I don't really know that much about this film. Like, I haven't seen the trailer really. I don't really know what the Wow, I'm about. so shocked. I know, it's shocking. Uh, but just some of the people that are involved, uh, it is something that I actually am interested in checking out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. All right, so Emancipation, if you're looking forward to it, it does come out on Apple TV Plus uh, on December 9th. I feel like for some of these movies, saying you're looking forward to it is, is kind of hard to say because it's a very hard subject matter. But if you're interested, uh, it is coming out then. Yeah, so definitely. Very hard. Um, yeah, definitely looking, definitely in, look uh, interested in this one for sure. Next film, unfortunately, I can't really say that for. It was a film I was interested in, and now I'm just not really on that wavelength, and that is Empire of Light. How do you feel? I do feel a bit numb, I suppose. The world is changing. Wow. You can't the world. Happy New Year! Okay, so if you were to talk to me about this film, I want to say like, let's say like two months ago, like before people had seen it at TIFF and the reviews were coming out and we saw the marketing of what this film was going to be, I would say, oh, fuck yeah, this film looks, sounds incredible. You know, it's dealing with, you know, uh, film within the 80s and things like that. Uh, it's the next film from um, Sam Mendes, who is coming off of, uh, you know, um, who's coming off of 1917 and things like that. And I've always thought that he is a uh, really strong director. I was very excited to see what he was going to do with this film, um, you know, with it taking place uh, during the 1980s and centering a lot around cinema and having this really strong cast. But I got to say, the marketing has not done it for me at all. Um, this looks honestly really boring. And I, I hate to say that because, like, I want to be excited for this, but, like, 
everything about it just looks very dull. It seems like a movie that we've seen quite a few times before. It doesn't really seem like it has that like inspiration that it really needs. Like the Fablemans that just came out, for example, that's a movie that really understands like the power of cinema and what it does for, you know, somebody and how, you know, they really kind of drive their life. Um, you know, it really drives their life throughout it. This film honestly kind of seems like an afterthought. It seems like we have this like kind of boring like love story going on. And then the cinematic stuff is kind of just like a backdrop. I know the teaser centered heavily on like Toby Jones's character, but then you barely see him in like the trailer. And I've heard he's not really in the movie all that much either. So yeah, uh, I just can't really get all that excited for this one. Every time the trailer plays, I'm like, this sounds like it could be so much better. And you have that really just like you have that, that really like moody pop song that's like the world is changing i'm like oh great let me go to sleep um like that's <laughs> that's how i feel when watching this trailer it just doesn't seem like it's going to interest me all that much and i, I want to be excited for it i i just really am not i'm sure olivia coleman's gonna give an amazing performance because it's fucking olivia coleman obviously she's gonna do a great job in this movie she's one of the best actresses out there uh michael ward i've heard a lot of good things about love colin firth love toby jones but overall to me kind of looks like a snooze fest want to be excited but i just no <laughs> yeah um this one is either gonna be like really like cute and wholesome or it's gonna be really boring and snooze yeah. fest um because i mean i love love stories but it's like some of them can just be very sleepy so hopefully it's actually good hopefully it's not like that i hope it's actually like surprising and sweet um i mean olivia colvin and colin firth are great actors like i'm sure they're gonna be phenomenal but like yeah i hope this one surprises me but i don't have the highest expectations as of right now you know i will say even with all the negative uh press this one has been getting i saw the trailer in front of pinocchio i don't think it looks that bad honestly like it definitely doesn't look like something that like i'm gonna like like that much yeah uh but i don't think it looks that bad honestly like it just looks like you're very like basic oscar drama film yeah uh and like very those can be. still be decent honestly um you know it just really depends on the screenplay for me honestly um so yeah so i mean i'm not gonna see it in theaters it's definitely gonna probably bomb and go to streaming like in january yeah uh, and I, and I and I know that's kind of like a, a bad a mindset to have nowadays because, you know, we should support theaters, obviously. But uh, this is one I will wait for streaming to see. But I will say this one, so. St speak your fucking soapbox, Violet. Support cinema. Support cinema, always. I, I, except, not... I, I guess except for Empire of Light. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not Empire of Light, but all other cinema. <laughs> No, in all seriousness, I probably am going to try to see us in theaters because it's literally playing at a theater that's like fucking 40 minutes away from me. Why the hell not? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, Empire of Light, looking forward to it. Uh, it, it comes out December 9th. I uh, just can't really get that excited for this one. So this one, I'm actually going to not be the one to introduce this next movie because I feel like I shouldn't be the one to introduce this next movie. Because, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, somebody else here. Uh, I feel like that this this movie is kind of like a lifestyle uh, for her. So go ahead. All righty, everyone. The film of the month, the film of the year, the film of the decade, the film of the century, the mean one. You gonna be okay? Because we can turn around right now. No. My poor girl. Her mother was killed. Her mind snapped. Did you ever find the Christmas killer? I never got a reliable description of the man. So this film looks absolutely horrible, and I cannot <laughs> wait for it. Like I like, did you, I don't know if y'all like I'm like Kevin. Did you see the trailer? Yes, I watched it last night, and it doesn't it, it like look beautiful? Film. Like yes, it looks absolutely atrocious. But like it looks just like like enter like it's such like a confident parody movie that like yes. just just based off of that, it's admirable. Uh, and then obviously, as people know, I'm a massive Dr. Seuss fan uh, in terms of like his art and stuff. And like the Grinch is like, in, in my opinion, like, like besides the cab, uh, uh, like uh, and, and it's uh, in the wonderful places you'll go. Like it, it's like it, it's like 
his like obviously like his like his top reading for me. Uh, and so uh, you know it's Christmas time, uh, and this is so anti Christmas, and I just I think it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. I, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not someone who's like offended by like stuff that no. like this, uh, cause like I even know some people like for Violent Night, they, they don't want to see it because they feel it's like making fun of Christmas and stuff. Personally, as much as I love Christmas, I'm not like that. So I, I, I don't, I'm not like offended about this or anything. Uh, and also, um, although I'm saying his name right, David Howard Fortin, right, Kevin? Yes, yes, yes. That also, yes. That, that also something. I yes, I uh, is playing the mean one in this. He's called the mean one in this who, who, who as obviously is. Y'all should know by now plays Art the Clown, the Terrifier films, and Terrifier yes. 2 is my favorite film of the year. Uh, so I am just such a, a shameless film of the year. What a, what a top two. That and everything ever all at once. What a top two. Um, so yeah, so that is um, why I'm excited for this film. Uh, so um, and I'm definitely going to see this in theaters as it is going to go to Regal Theaters. Uh, and I have like two that are uh, really close to me. So I'll be seeing it at one of them. So woo! Uh, yeah, so when it comes to this film, look, at, right out of the bat, like, right off the bat, objectively, this looks fucking terrible. I mean, this is very much has the feel of, like, a student film. The acting's just very stilted and things like that. Everybody's kind of talking like this in this movie, kind of feel like they're reading off a script. But my god, they are just, they're going for it. Like, it's similar to Violent Night. They know exactly what kind of movie this is, and they don't give a fuck. They're just, they're ready to make the most, like, ridiculous Grinch horror movie possible. And to be honest, like, I don't think The Grinch is a bad idea for a horror movie. I feel like it makes sense to kind of do a horror movie surrounding that character. Um, the idea that he, like, butchered Cindy Lou Who's parents, and that's actually what happened, and now she's out for revenge, like, sounds fucking ridiculous. But it really seems like this movie is just embracing how dumb it really is. Similar to the Winnie the Pooh movie that's coming out. Um <laughs> really seems like it's just embracing its ridiculousness and i think it's really going to succeed because of it i feel like this is a movie where as long as you know what you're getting yourself into you're going to have a good time with it the thing that has me really excited once again as violet mentioned david howard thornton playing the grinch he's gonna kill it i mean he is such an incredible actor when it comes to physicality when it comes to really just making these characters come to life i cannot wait to see what he's going to do with the grinch yes a lot of people have said it the mask is very similar to jim carrey's and i don't know how they ended up getting away with that i don't know what that courtroom uh you know sort of uh that that sort of courtroom uh debate was like you uh, know sort of... can, can, can i chime in on here yes I actually don't think it looks that similar, to be honest with you. Really, like, really? like, like, I, like, like, I know this is like a weird way to say it, but like the the one in this one looks more like like bearish to me than like mm -hmm. this, yeah, that, I can see it. Kind of has like it kind of has like 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 a, like a bear look to it. Uh, yeah, and like the one in the Grinch has more of like uh, a sort of like um, like rounded look to it that has like the, like the fuzz to it. This one looks a bit more like wrinkly and like bear like I, I don't know how to describe it like look, like just look at the nose it looks like a freaking teddy bear uh so personally i don't think it looks that similar also but, but like because i have heard from a lot of people obviously as we mentioned that it looks very similar to the jim carrey one uh but I don't know, personally i just want to chime in and say like i disagree yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, this looks completely ridiculous, but it really seems like a film that's um, going to be up my alley. Uh, what were you going to say? I think this, okay, this movie looks very stupid funny, but I'm very excited for it. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I love the gr actual, like, the OG Grinch movies. Oh, yeah. Um, and, like... Is that oh, that, that, your, that, that is your that is your ringtone around Christmas time. Good, good. But yeah, um, I'm very excited for this. Um, I mean, even if it's bad, I'm just I don't really care because I'm just. Oh it's, shit! It's, I didn't mean to do that. Really, it just looks really fun and just like one of those feel good movies you just watch at Christmas time when you're like bored, kind of thing. So I'm just like really excited for it. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, so yeah, the mean one, if you're excited for it. Uh, also, I love the fact this is actually getting a theatrical release. Like, I assume it's probably gonna be like a Fathom event of sorts, but the fact that like a movie like this is actually getting one, I think is honestly really cool. Um, so yeah, if you're looking forward to it, it does come out on December 9th. Uh, I hope this is just the most like ridiculous shit possible. Um, and we're actually going to turn it back over to Violet because I, I think this next movie coming out is one that uh, she, she, she has a little bit of excitement for, I got to say. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Y'all, we went 13 years for this one. <laughs> Avatar, The Way of Water. Dad, I know you think I'm crazy. I have to those big rocks. But I feel her. I hear her heartbeat. She's so close. So what does her heartbeat sound like? Mighty. Alrighty, so I'm actually not going to say that much about this one just because I don't want to like ramble and ramble like Kevin does. Uh, but <laughs> what do you uh, mean? I never ramble. So I think this film looks absolutely incredible, uh, and I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna say it from everything I know about this film. I think it's gonna be better than the first one. Yeah. Like I, like I honestly think so. Like I just think I think at least story wise, it is absolutely. I uh, going to just excel in all of its like mighty emotional uh like um epicness of it uh it looks so focused on family and like you know like the children that you know uh, Jake and Bateri have had and like mm -hmm. someone that like you know really values family and like really wants to have kids one day like I know this movie is going to get me as I have cried <laughs> at almost every single I, I have cried like a, a besides the first Terminator, every single James Cameron film I've seen, I haven't seen The like, True Lies and The Abyss. Uh, but, like, even Aliens <laughs> makes me emotional. Uh, so, <laughs> like, um, you know, I, I'm looking Listen, forward Newt, to Newt will do that to you. Newt will do that to you. Oh, my God, I love Newt. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so, yeah, so that, um, has, you know, the mirrors, I look forward to this. And visually, like, the 3D also, and the high frame rate, uh, I saw the re-release of Avatar in Dolby 3D. Also, Kevin did too. Um, and when they showed the scene uh, during the mid-credits for it uh, with that HFR, uh, the HFR during the Avatar release, I was very hit and miss on, but the HFR, like because it's actually from the 48 frames per second for a way of water, uh, like, the, like the variable, like it's going to be variable also, but like it looks like, like it was like the first time that like I've seen HFR and I'm like, I actually like this just as much as regular 24 frames per second. Um so yeah no so there's just a, there's a lot i could say about this but like i, I just i want i don't want to keep rambling but like it looks epic it looks super emotional it looks absolutely gorgeous and pretty and just really great uh and i can't wait to cry during it and uh it'll be a fun three hour and 12 minute ride so woo. <laughs> Yeah, uh, listen, I have had quite the roller coaster ride when it comes to my opinion on the first Avatar. Uh, Violet knows this. I feel like a lot of people know this. I used to really be just like very pessimistic when it came to this movie. I used to be like, I don't understand the hype. I don't understand why everybody loves it. Great visuals, but really lame story. There's, there's nothing to latch on to. The characters are boring. It's too long. And so when they re-released it um, in September, I said, you know what? I haven't seen this in years. I literally haven't seen this movie since it came out. All this time, I have been bashing this film, saying, like, I don't understand the hype for it. Why Why would any, you know, the, the second one is, it's taking forever to come out. I don't feel like the hype is there and things like that. And then I rewatched it. And I just said, what the fuck was wrong with you? Because now... I absolutely adore the first movie. I think it's a fantastic look at just embracing different cultures and understanding different ways of life. And I, I think all of that, it, it tells that story very well. Uh, Zoe Zaldana is fucking incredible in that movie. She absolutely is the standout of that film for me, especially one particular scene involving her just like in pain and anguish over something. Uh, just 
absolutely phenomenal. Visuals are groundbreaking. The the HFR, I'm not a fan of HFR. It was fantastic in the first Avatar. Like James Cameron really made it so that is the way to see this movie. And I feel like it honestly really did elevate the experience overall. So yeah, I have turned around on that movie significance. Easily one of the biggest turnarounds I've ever had on a movie. Uh, from one that I really didn't think much of to absolutely loving. And that has just bumped up my excitement for Avatar The Way of Water. Like six notches honestly because i was already looking forward to this based on the teaser when they released it uh during multiverse of madness violet contestants i was like okay it looks good it looks good i i think it definitely has potential but the more we have gotten in terms of the marketing especially now having rewatched the first movie i am going to agree with violet that i think this has the potential to be even better than the first movie the i the themes that they're exploring here this whole new sort of race of sorts of the navi and the way that they look and things you know and then you know looking a little bit different and things like that but then you know understanding you know their culture i i think it's going to do they're going to do a really good job of of getting us to uh you know latch on to these new characters but it also is kind of a different franchise at this point because now we're centering more on the children and the family that these two characters have raised um and i i think there's just there's so much that they can explore here what's going on with steven lang how the hell is he back i don't know what's going to happen there but that's going to be very interesting to see um you know, you have Kate Winslet coming into this one. I'm very excited to see what her role really is in this movie and what she's really going to do. Sigourney Weaver is playing one of the uh, kids, one of the teenage daughters, and I think she's going to give a really strong performance. So overall, I mean, and also the visuals. Oh, my God. I mean, the 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 fact that James Cameron, you know, has taken as much time as he has on this movie. Literally, the first movie came out in 2009. It's now coming out now. I mean, you can just tell the dedication, the painstaking dedication that was put into this film just from the few trailers we have seen. It is absolutely breathtaking. And I truly don't know how he pulled it off in the way that he did. Going as far as to like have them actually go underwater and things like that. I mean, this just looks like an otherworldly experience. The fact this movie's like three hours long as well, like sign me the hell up. I'm so excited to see how this turns out. I think it's going to be such a powerful and such a fantastic follow-up uh, to this franchise that has like five more films after this. So they clearly have a lot more story to tell. And I'm just really excited to see what else they're going to do with, with this, you know, with this story, what, what other ideas do they have? Uh, you know, how can they expand on things that they kind of introduce in the first movie? There's so much they can do with the sequel. And I really think it is going to deliver overall. It honestly is now one of the most anticipated the entire month. I can't believe I'm actually saying it considering how, little of how just honestly zero how how um how little interest i had for it just a couple months ago but now i am just absolutely just awaiting for uh the second one i really think it's going to be something incredible and i i can't wait to see how this film delivers yeah this one definitely seems very like special and like yeah the visuals look really great and beautiful and i feel like it's gonna be very like emotional too um, I feel like it could like really touch people and just like hit them. Yeah. Like, uh, it's been like so long since I've seen Avatar, obviously. So, yeah. but like having the sequel come out this many years later, it's like I'm kind of glad it took that a long time. You know, like it, they didn't rush it. Yeah. Um. So I think there's gonna be a lot of story to tell, and I'm really excited to see this one. Obviously, I don't know who I'm gonna see it with, but. We will see. <laughs> um, but it seems just like very creative and very unique. And I'm so excited. Yeah. So Avatar The Way of Water, uh, easily the biggest movie, I think, of the entire month. That is undisputed. Um, so I'm very excited to see how this turns out. I really hope it ends up living up to the immense hype surrounding it. After all this time, I just really hope this ends up being a big success for James Cameron. But we will just have to see. Also coming out on that day is a much different movie than Avatar, but one that I am still very interested in, and that, of course, is Bardo. ¿Dónde estás? No sé. ¡Viva 
México, cabrones! Okay, so Bardo, um, look, this is another film that I think has had quite the journey. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, uh, Alejandro Gonzalez and Yuritsu, I think, is such a phenomenal director. Been a big fan of, you know, quite a few of his films. And so, you know, with how much I adored Birdman and The Revenant and things like that, I was just really excited to see what he was going to do with this film. And then the reviews came out, like, within TIFF, and people were saying this film's, like, super self-indulgent, it's, like, way too long, it's, you know, doesn't do a good job, like, it doesn't do a good job of really telling the story it feels it, you know it feels like there's so much that can be cut and flashback you know flash forward to now it has been cut uh the movie is much shorter now it went from like 170 something to like 150 something so right off the bat i'm it's i'm interested in seeing what's now like a completely different um, I just the film. wikipedia it's 160 Okay, okay. So they shaved off a little bit less than I thought. But <laughs> yeah, they, they did shave it off considerably. So I'm interested. He cut like in- he cut like twenty five minutes from the movie. Yeah, he cut like 25 minutes from the movie. And uh, to my knowledge, I don't think a lot of people have seen the newer cut. So I'm excited to see, you know, right off the bat how that really does turn out. But I I think this definitely seems like it's going to be a very effective film. This is clearly a passion project of sorts for Inuritsu, uh, kind of centering on, you know, his childhood a bit and things like that. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing, you know, what he really ends up doing with this film. Um, you know, I, the trailers don't really tell you a lot of, of what this is really all about. Um, but I think this has a lot of potential for sure. I hope this turns out to be a very effective film. I hope this is another really strong film from Inuri 2. I'm still very excited for it. Um, obviously, there is that worry of what people have said, but I'm going to try to not let that you know get to me at all and actually still be excited for this film because I think it has a lot of potential behind it. So yeah, Bardo, I really hope this turns Turns out to be a really strong film, but we will just have to see. Oh, are you going to say something? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just sniffles. No. Do you want okay, me to go, go first? Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been mixed on Inuritu's films, um, as people know. This one I'm cautiously interested in. Um, I know he actually made uh, film prints for this one, so I'm hoping that I can see it on film. Because uh, it, it opened up in uh, 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 Cambridge a few weeks ago, actually. Um, I wasn't able to see it there, but um, I, I am definitely going to watch this one. Again, cautiously optimistic. I mean, honestly, like the reviews I've heard for it haven't really, like, like t- like scared me from seeing the film no. uh you know because because like i'm not someone that's like oh it's like self-indulgent like there's a lot of art i like that's like self-indulgent uh admittedly <laughs> so like i'm not like that doesn't really like deter me from like wanting to see the film um i think it sounds interesting still um from what i've seen it looks gorgeous um so you know there's always that so uh yeah i'm definitely interested in seeing it i'm interested in seeing how it does it for award season and how much netflix pushes it uh and uh we'll have to wait and see uh, but, uh, you know, I am glad that, you know, as a, as a creative, you know, like you obviously at the end of the day, you have to make what you want for yourself. But I also think it is cool that like he did take the criticism that he got from the initial yeah. cut of the film and was like, you know what, like, I am going to cut this down a bit. Um, and so, yeah, so shout out yeah. to that. So I am looking forward to this one. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, this was supposed to be, like, the big film the Netflix was going to push, and now we really haven't seen oh. too much of a push for it, so I'm interested in seeing if if the new cut gets better reviews, if maybe... I mean, I hope this one is good. <laughs> if the newer cut gets oh. better, it gets better reviews, hopefully it gives Netflix the push to actually, you know, um, to push it a little bit more for awards, but we'll I see. I feel like this one could be very hit or miss. Like, it does sound pretty good, mm-hmm. um, and, like, it's and like the cinematography looked really good from like the trailer, but like oh, yeah. it could be a very hit or miss as well. Like either it could be really good or just kind of like boring. But I'm excited. I hope it surprises me. All right. So Bardo, if you're looking forward to it, uh, it does come out uh, December 16th on the Netflix. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I, I hope it turns out to be some special, but we will really just have to see. Also coming out on December 16th is uh, one that I've been interested in for for quite a bit now, and that is Nanny. <laughs> 
Aisha's here. Aisha. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Okay. Here's any number you need, including her therapist. Thank you. Jobs don't fall from the sky. Just work hard to keep it. Where are you from? Stats, we've been at. South Africa. Okay. Senegal. Oh! We got a winner! <laughs> okay, so Nanny, um, look, I... Again, I say this every month, and this is going to be something that you're not going to hear me say anymore because since the movie previews are ending, but uh, this is yet another movie that I wanted to see at fucking Sundance earlier in the year and did not get the chance to see. And since then, I've been very interested in this film, very intrigued to see how it turns out. I've heard some really interesting reviews about this one. And yeah, this looks like a very intriguing film. You have this woman who um, is, you know, from Africa and she is assuming this new role as a nanny and she's hoping that it's going to bring like her younger son to like the United States but then there's this violent presence that starts to invade like her dreams and reality and you can see how it really is like kind of pushing her over the edge and I have heard amazing things about Anna Diop in this movie I can't wait to see the performance that uh, she gives here so many people have been uh, praising her that have seen this film the visual style to this film also looks very intriguing I'm interested in seeing how that turns out the horror elements seem like they're going to work very well in this movie there's a lot of social commentary surrounding this film as well um this just looks like a very intriguing uh, sort of, you know, horror film. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing how this one uh, does turn out. I, I hope it it definitely is is worth the wait because I've been waiting to see this one for a long time. And I, I hope it's, it definitely uh, at least uh, surpasses my expectations. But we will see. Um, I never really knew much about this one, honestly. Like, until... Sorry, I had to, like, look it up again. <laughs> um, yeah, I, this one seems like it could be pretty unique. Uh, I mean, obviously it has the reputation. Representation is very important oh, yeah. um, for it. But, like, I don't know. I feel like this one could be another hit or miss. Uh, I'm excited for it, though. Um, like, it has a really good cast. Um Sorry, I'm just very, I'm like trying to read everything. <laughs> um, I feel like this, like, the representation and the story are going to be very important, but um, the movie itself could be either really good or just very um, subpar, but um, hopefully it surprises me. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to watch it because I definitely will. This is one I admittedly haven't actually heard that much about, but it does sound really interesting for me to describe it, Kevin, so I'll have to look into it. Yeah, so Nanny, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. That's everything coming out on uh, December 16th. Now we get to the next movie that we're talking about here, which is not a film that I am admittedly that excited for, and that is I Want to Dance with Somebody. A uh, common criticism of you, your music isn't black enough. Well, who said that? That's just bull, and it makes me angry, actually. It's hateful and uninformed. My whole life, she ain't black enough, she ain't white enough. Well, how about she's not obedient enough? How about she ain't fearful enough? And I... Music is not a color to me, it has no boundaries. I sing what I want to sing, be how I want to be, and reach as big an audience as I can. All right, so you're not excited for it. Oh no, and I'll get into why. Uh, so this one, look, yes, Whitney Houston biopic sounds very interesting, right? Whitney Houston is a phenomenal artist, and that, that you can do a lot with her story. But then you look at who's involved with this movie, and all you needed to see are the words from the writers of Bohemian Rhapsody, and automatically I'm I'm turned off because I feel like all this is going to be just from what I've seen within the marketing is another just really generic uh, music biopic. And it doesn't really seem like it's going to do anything that different. It doesn't really seem like it's going to dive into these themes of like, you know, race and these themes of, you know, um, identity, like really all that well. It honestly seems very surface level in the way that they're tackling them. Um, I'm sure Naomi Aki is going to give a great performance. She's a fantastic actress. And I think she's going to give a really strong performance in this film. 
but this is gonna for me this just seems like one of those movies where like if you want to make a template of like these are all the things wrong with music biopics it feels like this film is going to tick all those boxes because it just seems very similar to other films we've gotten. It doesn't really seem like it's doing anything to really separate itself from like the minutia of endless, just music biopics of, Oh, you know, here's their rise. Here's their fall. You know, here, here's something controversial that happened, you know, and it, it does it in, in a very like matter of fact way, almost like a Wikipedia article. Um, it just doesn't really look that great to me. I don't really like what I'm seeing here in terms of, the screenplay i i obviously you know i think there's definitely going to be some things that elevate like i said naomi aki's performance but overall i mean this just looks like such a generic uh biopic to me and i i just really can't get excited for this at all the director i'm also just like not really a big fan of um she did this series called self-made that i found honestly really dull i was not a fan of it at all she also did that harriet movie that came out a couple years ago which i did not hear anything good about um in terms of that film so yeah uh, i just i just don't think this is a film that is in the right hands at all i think that a whitney houston biopic could be very interesting but i think you needed a much different uh writer and director to tackle it and it just doesn't seem like this is quite the way to go about it uh with the talent on display so yeah I, now, I there's it. where you're wrong on this uh, this actually looks very interesting to me. Um, ever since I first saw the trailer, like, in theater and stuff, I actually was excited. Because mm -hmm. I tend to enjoy most biopics. Um, and obviously, like, Whitney Houston was such an icon. And it was amazing. So I loved mm -hmm. her. And, like, who doesn't love her, honestly? So I'm really yeah. excited to see what actually happened and get more into, like, the story. Uh, I mean, hopefully it's just not too generic, but I still, I'm very excited for it. And like, like it's a real good cast too. So I hope they do a good job, but yeah, um, this one could be very touching. It could be, it could have a huge impact and I don't know. I feel like this one will really like touch people, but we'll see. Yeah, this is one that like I like I really really want to be like excited for it because like when you do it's like an iconic iconic artist. Admittedly, it's just like like I'm not gonna like go out and like dismiss the movie entirely, but it is one that I am a bit worried about just considering who's involved with it, yeah. uh, especially because I did was not a fan of how. Bohemian Rhapsody, for example, like portrayed certain accuracies within the story. I'll just leave it at that. So I'm really hoping that with this one, it is a more like respectful towards its subject. Um, so yeah, so I'll leave it at that. But I, I, I really do hope it's good. Like I, I don't want to like write it off and be like it's going to be bad. I'll just not. Um, my, ho I'm hopeful for it. So yeah. All right. So I wanted to answer somebody if you're looking forward to it. it does come out on December 23rd. I, I hope it surprises me. I think it definitely has potential. Just everything I've seen from it, I just can't really get excited. Uh, the next movie, however, is one that I definitely am very much looking forward to, and that is Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Legend tells of a wishing star of a single wish waiting to be granted. Kitties of boss, I need your help. Is the great Puss in Boots asking for help? Well, you see, uh... <laughs> Kitty, please! That wish could get me my life back. Okay, okay, Possum Face. I won't make you back. But first... Ah! Hey, slow down! I know what I'm doing. <laughs> what? What? What's funny? Nothing should be funny. Get the okay. So this is another one where, yeah, it's taken a long time to get a sequel to Puss in Boots. I think Puss in Boots is a very overlooked uh, DreamWorks film. It's very fun. Um, it's very creative. It does a really good job of, of taking a side character and making him the lead and having a completely different feel from the Shrek movies, but also retaining what works within that franchise. I think it, it has the perfect blend of both of those things. And the last wish seems like, honestly, it could be even better. I really like everything that I'm seeing from this film. I love the premise of it where he's on his last life and basically he has to do everything he can to 
try to you know like fulfill his passion before he it ends up running out um i think there's a lot that you can do with this premise and i'm very excited to see how it turns out antonio banderas seems like once again he's just gonna kill it in this role he's always been just so perfect um in this role and i think this could potentially be his best performance yet um salma hayek coming back you know excited to see what she's gonna do but oh my god uh we gotta talk about some of the newcomers here the fact that we have both Florence Pugh, Olivia Coleman, and also Divine Joy Randolph uh, joining the cast. I will say, I feel like well. Olivia Coleman's like the main person we're talking about tonight. <laughs> Uh, well, we talked about her in like two movies, but yeah. Um, Literally, though, it's funny. <laughs> but um, also, also, um, also, uh, uh, John Mulaney being in this movie. I mean, it really seems like it could be a fun cast of characters. Oh my God, Henry's here. Um, we're talking about Puss in Boots. Hello. Um, but uh, yeah, this one I am super excited for. I think it looks like a very creative premise, and it just it seems like the kind of sequel that is really just going to do a great job of uh, really just taking this series in a whole new direction and i'm very excited to see how this turns out and i really feel like dreamworks like kind of needs a win right now and i i hope that this is it for them i've heard a lot of people that have seen this movie have said that it's definitely one of the better animated films of the year so i really hope this can just be like a really great like you know late entry um into the year and really turn out to be uh just a very very fun sequel because i think it has a lot of potential behind it so yeah i'm very excited for this one um, I actually don't know if I've seen the original, so I definitely have to go watch that first. No, you definitely should. Yeah. Very, very but, great. um, the cast is, like, really great. I love Florence Q so much. Like, she's one of my favorites right now. Oh, yeah. And, like, everyone else is, like, really great, too. But, uh, really all I have to say about this is just that, like, I hope it's good, because I don't really know much about it, obviously, because I haven't seen the original. So, um, but yeah, I'll definitely go back and watch it, and then I'll go from there. <laughs> Yeah, I admittedly didn't love the trailer for this, but the reviews have definitely been getting me more excited because apparently it's great from the early access screening they did for it. Um, yeah. I think the animation for it is definitely unique. I'm still not like completely sold on it. I still need something I have to see the film to obviously see the film to see how I feel about it. But um, I love Puss in Boots. I love the Shrek universe, and I'm excited that we're getting another film on it. So hopefully, I like it. This film looks sexy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Well said, well said. Um, but yeah, honestly, best the thing ever. <laughs> best oh yeah, comment. that's honestly where words couldn't have been words couldn't have been said better. Um, <laughs> all right, th this next movie, you know, I've had Violet introduce a movie. I'm gonna have Ali introduce this next one, considering mm. I think we're both very excited for this next movie. All right, this next one is the incredible Matilda the Musical. Yes. There's a place you must send if you haven't been good. You're gonna meet the trunch, Bull Headmistress of Crunch her more. This isn't school. It's a prison. I like troublemakers, Wormwood. They make such a lovely sound. When they snap. No! That's not right! You just said no to me. Um, I'm actually, like, super excited for this because, like, I loved the original Matilda movie. Like, I watched it so much when I was a kid. Um, so I'm just really excited. Uh, and, like, honestly, it was probably one of my repeats when I was little, too. Like, I would, I would rent it a lot <laughs> at, like, the video stores. Um, but then, obviously, the musical looks incredible. Like, the music that I've heard is so good like i feel like the score is going to be wonderful uh yeah acting seems like it will probably be really good um i mean emma thompson's one of the best actresses out there as well mm. next to olivia coleman um and like the rest of these people i don't really know offhand but uh i'm sure they'll do a great job uh and i'm sure this is everything from like the trailer the cinematography is really good and like very unique very creative so i'm excited to see where they go with the story and like see if it lives up to the like ex high expectations like lives up to the original movie because the original is so good like it's definitely one of the it's a, definitely a 90s classic for sure yeah, uh, right off the bat, this is not an adaptation of the 90s film. This is an adaptation of the Broadway musical that came out in, like, uh, 2012. And that's a show that I think is is really great. Um, it's just 
really fun, very whimsical, very creative. Um, a lot of always such a fantastic cast recording, you know, songs like Revolting Children, When I Grow Up, Bruce. I listen to those songs like daily. Like it's one of my favorite uh, cast recordings in general. Um, so when I heard they were doing like a movie adaptation, I was very excited to see how it was going to turn out. I will admit I definitely was skeptical as I am with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, musical adaptations, but knowing that they were doing one, I felt like this could be in really good hands. And I really like what I'm seeing from the marketing here. It seems like they are finding a way to really just retain the magic, the wonder, the the creativity of of this of this uh, story very well, but also just the heart of what they're going for. You know, it seems like they're doing a really good job with that. Alicia Weir obviously is not an actress that any of us are familiar with, but she seems like she's going to give a really big like breakthrough performance here. Henry, I fucking hate you for that, by the way. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm so excited to see what she does here. And then Emma Thompson, I mean, never would have expected her to play Trunchbull, but she seems like she's really going to kill it. I feel like the best Trunchbulls are the ones that like make the character their own. And it seems like that's exactly what Emma Thompson is doing here. She's really finding a way to make this iconic character her own. And I'm very excited to see what she does here. Uh, Lashana Lynch she also seems perfectly cast as Miss Honey. I think she's really going to kill it in this movie. Uh, and from early reviews, I mean, I'm really just liking what I am hearing from this film i think this is going to hopefully be like the you know last month of the year musical romp that we all just kind of really need right now um you know it, it hasn't been the greatest year for musicals 13 the musical really let me down but i'm hoping that this one really turns out to be something great i think there is a lot of potential behind it i love the cinematography i love the look of everything there's a clip that's been released of the all of them doing revolting children and oh my god the choreography is insane for this film it just really seems like they understand what they need to do to make a movie adaptation of this work and i really just hope they're able to retain what made you know that show so magical and i, I think they're going to do it really well here What is Danny DeVito? <laughs> oh my I god, agree. Danny DeVito, I love your work. <laughs> Wrong movie, but... Go ahead, Ryan. Um, yeah, no, I am looking forward to this one. I actually am not that familiar with the story of Matilda, so uh, this will be like a first for me, actually. Um, but wow. uh, yeah, no, so I look forward to it. Henry, what do you think? It looks okay. I hope it's good. Obviously, the first one's a the '90s one's a classic, so I don't know if we can top it, but we'll see. All right, so Matilda the Musical, uh, I am so excited for this film. It honestly is one of most anticipated the entire month, and I really hope it ends up uh, living up to uh, the hype, but we will just have to see. Um, it does come out on Netflix on Christmas Day. I will definitely be watching it uh, the second it comes out because I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, but the next movie coming out is a very interesting one, and that is Living. Mr. Williams, a little on the frosty side, perhaps. Not too much fun in laughter. Brother like church. What is it up? Small wonder I didn't notice what I was becoming. Dan, you're right. If only to be alive for one day. But I realize it. I don't know how. Okay, so Living, uh, this is another one that I know was at Sundance earlier this year that I did not get the chance to see. That being, it wasn't really one that was like very high on my radar or anything, but I have heard quite a few things about it. A lot of people have been talking about Bill Nye's performance and how much he kills it in this movie. Um, and so that alone has me very excited. But of course, the biggest thing with this film is it being an American remake of Ikuru. Is that how it's pronounced, Violet? Ikuru? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's uh it's a very famous uh japanese film i believe wait um, wait 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 a minute it's a remake of that yes it is yes it is interesting okay 
Yes, it is. It is. It is based on. Um, it is based on Akuru, um, and uh, that definitely has me very intrigued to see what they're. Well, it's not a. It's more like an adaptation. I don't know how like faithful it is to the story and whatnot, but it, it's very much like based upon like that source material. Um, I don't really know much else beyond that, other than it follows this guy that is like facing like this fatal illness in like 1950s London. But it does seem like it could be a very effective film in that way. Uh, aside from Bill Nye, Amy Lou Wood, fantastic actress from Sex Education. I think she's really going to kill it here. Tom Burke is great in like everything he's in. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Uh, I don't really have admittedly a ton to say about this one, but I do think this has quite a bit of potential behind it. I've heard some people say that Bill Nye could maybe slip in there for best actor. So yeah. Bill Nye, the science guy? No, Bill Nye, like Bill, Bill Nye, he, Bill, Bill Nye. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill Nye, the science guy. Um, yeah, but, Bill um, Nye's an actor now. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. Um, but uh, but yeah, oh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Uh, this is one I literally had nothing, like, no knowledge or anything going into, like, the trailer. So I don't really have much to say about this. But, um, I mean, I really just hope it's intriguing and um Hopefully it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, it could just be a hit or miss. That's really all I have to say. Yeah, no, I definitely did not know about this song, but hopefully it is pretty good. I could have sworn we talked about it before, but I guess not. <laughs> the yeah. Also, it's, it's not in the movie. movie. Yes, uh... If you're looking forward to living, uh, it does come out on um, December 25th. Uh, definitely hoping this one turns out to be something really good. Um, but uh, oh shit, no! I when is that coming out? Is that what is the date? The 26th. Okay, I mean we can talk about that one. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely talk about the one. I, I honestly forgot that was coming out in December. Um, mm -hmm. But for some reason, I thought that already came out. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. But um, but yeah, the next movie we're talking about is definitely one that uh, is, is a pretty big film that I think a lot of us are very excited for, myself included. And that is Babylon. If you could go anywhere in the whole world, where would you go? I always want to be part of something bigger. Yes. Let's go. Something that lasts, that means something. You know, when I first moved to LA, <laughs> you know what signs on all the doors read? No actors or dogs allowed. I changed that. Good morning. Good job for you. I'll do anything. That's the cocksucker they sent to screw us. Yeah! Okay, so Babylon, yes, this is of course the next film from Damien Chazelle, one of the best actors, and the actors, one of the best directors working today. What the fuck, Kevin? One of the best directors uh, working today. Uh, such a incredible talent in terms of his storytelling, in terms of what he's able to say about like you know dreams and passions and things like that. And so it's not surprising that he would take on something like Hollywood, but 1930s Hollywood. I mean, this film just looks absolutely outrageous this really seems like this is the movie where he is just going all out in terms of his style and i honestly think it really is going to work here i know the reviews have honestly been pretty mixed so far some people have said this movie really works some people have said it really doesn't i don't really know where i'm gonna fall all i can say is that all of the marketing has been incredible for this movie um and so good, it honestly did become my most anticipated of the rest of the year. Uh, the cast here is just so solid. Margot Robbie, uh, Brad Pitt, uh, you know, you have uh, Dean Smart in there. Um, who, who else? Uh, uh, J J uh, Javin Adipo, uh, just incredible cast all around. I think everyone really is going to kill. Oh, Tobey Maguire as well. So excited to see what he does in this movie. Um, but yeah, this really just seems like a movie that's going to tackle this time period very well. We don't know a lot about like what the central premise is here. I know it involves uh, Diego Calva's character, who I hope gives a really strong like breakthrough performance here. I'm not really familiar with him as an actor, and I hope this film is able to kind of um, 
really kind of usher in his talent and, and showcase how incredible of an actor he can be. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for this film. Um, I've been very much looking forward to it for a long time now. It looks absolutely outrageous. And yeah, I mean, I really don't have anything else to say. The cinematography looks like this is the cinematography of the year. So, so glossy, so stylish in that way. I'm so excited to see how it turns out. Justin Herbert's a score already seems like it's going to kill it. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I can't get, uh, I, I can't contain my excitement for this one. It's three hours long. It's it's going to be insane. Um, I'm so excited to see how this turns out. So yeah, Babylon, definitely my most anticipated of the month for sure. This movie looks so good. Like I'm actually very excited for this one. And like this cast is just stacked. Like, yeah. um, I mean, we're not really big on Brad Pitt as a person, but yeah. an actor. Um, Margot Robbie, I adore her so much. Like definitely one of my favorites. Tobey Maguire, is, what's he going to do? Is he going to kind of hold out some Spider-Man shit? Just kidding. Definitely um, not. No, not in this one. I'm, I'm excited to see him. Uh, and like, the rest of this cast is like it's huge look at this cast um but it just the cinematography and like score looks really great um i feel like this movie is gonna be probably one of the best of the month um i mean i will be very disappointed if it's bad but i i have very high expectations for it um and I feel like it's going to be very strong, very top tier. And I feel like it's going to do very well in theaters, too. I hope so. <laughs> I'm very stoked for it. Yeah, so I still have not seen the trailers for this film. I don't really know that much like about it. So admittedly, I'm trying to go in like, as blind as possible. Uh, okay. But from what I know about it, it sounds great. I love Damien Chazelle. The cast is fantastic. And I look forward to seeing it with uh, this uh, little fucker named Kevin Fishtuck. Yes, yes, we will be seeing it. <laughs> this film looks sexy as fuck. We got Bradley Pitt, Margot Robbie, Tobey Maguire, and the second thing he's done since The Boss Baby. <laughs> 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 The director of Don't Worry Darling, Olivia Wilde. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Other people. This movie is going to eat my ass. Oh, yeah. It's definitely going to be sexy as hell. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, Babylon, <laughs> I am so excited for this one. Really hope it turns out to be as good as I think it can be. Uh, but we will just have to see how it does turn out. Um, if you're looking forward to Babylon, it does come out on uh, December, not December 25th anymore, December 23rd, actually. It's getting a wide release on December 23rd. So I'm very excited to see how this one turns out. Now we can talk about Broker Violet, and you can introduce this one. So, uh, this is the film from the director of Shoplifters. Uh, yes. And I am excited for this one. It sounds great. I love the cast. And this is the first one that me and Kevin will be seeing together since the uh, second film we saw together, uh, besides Roma, mm -hmm. was Shoplifters back in 2018. So I'm very yes. excited to do uh, Actually, we should just make this the second one we see then, just to keep the way I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I heard it's really, really great. So yeah. Yeah, this looks very effective. Uh, I don't really have a ton to say about it other than you have the actor from Parasite who, fuck, Song Kang Ho, fucking killed it in that movie. And so I'm excited to see what he does here. Um, seems like a very effective film. I really like the premise behind it. Uh, Shoplifter is a movie that I really liked. And I think that the director, he's willing to tackle some some very hard hitting subjects about like, you know, poverty and things like that. And I think he's, it seems like he's tackling that even more here. So yeah, I, I think this could be a very uh, effective film for sure. I know like nothing about this film, uh, but it looks, I hope it's good. Obviously, like we love Korean films. That's, we love the representation and yes. I'm, I hope it's great. Like, yeah, I'm definitely, I want to see it. Yeah, I saw the trailer for it in front of Moon Age Daydream and it looks good. I haven't seen any of the director's other movies, but Obviously, Song, Song Kang Ho is a king, so oh, yeah. 
Hope it's good. Yeah, that's enough of a reason to be excited for it. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking forward to Broker, it does come out on uh, December 26th. Can't believe I fucking forgot about it. But yeah, uh, that comes out then. Um, next movie we're talking about, though, is uh, Corsage. Uh- Meine Aufgabe ist es, die Geschicke dieses Reiches zu lenken. Deine Aufgabe ist es, lediglich zu repräsentieren. Dafür habe ich dich ausgewählt, dafür bist du da. Tschüss. Um, this is a film that is another, it's actually another uh, foreign film um, from a director that I'm not overly familiar with. I haven't seen a lot of her her works and things like that. I've, I've heard about her, but I haven't really seen anything that she's done. Um, this one looks pretty good. I don't really have a ton to say about it. Vicky Kripes is an incredible actress, and it seems like she's <laughs> really going to kill it um, in this movie. But I, I think it definitely does have some potential behind it. Um, you know, I like the premise here of this empress, and she's kind of like rebelling against like her public image, and she wants to protect her legacy. You know, it seems like it could be a very interesting film. I'm not like super hyped or anything, but I, I think it has potential. Yeah, this is another one I don't have a ton to say, but I mean, I it has potential for sure, and yeah. like I don't really know any of the people that are in it, but I, I hope it's great. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, Violet had to go, uh, so we're very happy that she was able to be here for the last movie preview. Uh, love getting to have. Oh, oh, she's back. <laughs> I thought you had to leave. That was an accident. All right. Well, you you have anything to say about Corsage? Uh, I do not. I apologize. <laughs> I figured. Henry. I yeah. never heard of it, but Vicky Creeps is cool. Yes. We love Vicky <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so the, ne- the next one coming out, though, um, it's a- another Netflix release that is uh, it's one of those movies where it's like it's getting a theatrical release, but then it's coming on to Netflix in January. So people are going to debate the entire year uh, if it's a 2022 movie or a 2023 movie. I'm counting as a 2022 movie. Two? God, I hope not. Um, but uh, it is, of course, the pale blue eye. Detective Landor, one of our cadets, hanged himself last night. That's the matter for the coroner. I'm afraid that's not the end of it. His heart was carved from his chest. What type of fella could do this? have to be a bad man needed to decipher this rumor has it there are instructions for immortality someone there Okay, so this one, um, I really don't know a ton about, admittedly. Um, I know that it's like this investigative uh, thriller of sorts, and it centers around um, this detective who, uh, you know, also has this uh, young cadet who eventually turns out to be Edgar Allan Poe. Um, That's really all I really know about this one. I know that Scott Cooper also is involved with it. Hopefully this is a better film than the last stupid shit he put out in Antlers. Uh, I hope this is a much better film for him because I think he's a really good director and I think he can tackle stuff like this very well. And I think period pieces is like when he shines um, at his best. I'm excited to see what he does with this film. Christian Bale seems like he's really going to kill it here, but I'm hearing really incredible things about Harry Melling and his performance as Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm very excited to see what he's going to do. Uh, this seems like it could be a very effective sort of mystery film. Um, very intriguing from uh, what we've seen of it. A very short teaser, not really a ton to say, but overall I, I definitely am very much looking forward to this one. This one actually looks pretty interesting and intriguing for sure. Um, and like Kristen, Christian Bale always kills it for sure. Like he's oh, yeah. great. And like, all, honestly, this cast is really stacked. I feel like they'll do a great job. And then the story looks super interesting. And I can't wait. <laughs> I don't have a ton to say, but I obviously am excited to see it. I'm going to keep it totally real. What movie are we talking about? The Pale Blue Eye. I actually don't think I've heard of this one. So no, we talked about it. This is the one with Edgar Allan Poe with like Christian Bale. I literally don't. I'm I'm keeping I'm keeping it real. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, 
I, hopefully you remember, but yeah, Pale Blue Eye comes out <laughs> December 26th. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, the next like movie. Bale. Wait, what were you going to say? I said, I feel like Christian Bale. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh yeah, always, always. Um, that that's that's the way to feel, honestly. But uh, also yeah, coming out, Bale, you know, like look at all of us. No, oh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, also coming. I don't know what the hell we're saying. Also coming out on December twenty fifth uh, is a movie that was originally supposed to go wide, and now it's not coming out till fucking January uh, in terms of like an expanded release, and that is a man called Otto. <laughs> No, 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 stop! Oh my god. Give me the keys. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Otto. Otto? O T T O. I'm Abby. O T T O. <laughs> Got some new neighbors. Bye. Edward Husband. I brought you some food. Okay. okay. Bye. Are you always this unfriendly? I am not unfriendly. Okay, you're not. Every word you say is like a warm cuddle. Okay, so this one is another one that, like, I really want to be excited for. I love Tom Hanks, you know, fantastic actor. Um, I like that he's playing a much different character than we're used to. This guy's, like, much more, like, curmudgeon -y and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, he really wants nothing to do uh, with people. And he gets to a point where he is kind of just, like at the end of his rope, but he is constantly interrupted by like all these different people that get in his way. To me though, this just looks honestly very schmaltzy and I just can't get that excited for it. Every time I see this trailer, I'm like, this just looks like a movie that is made to get Tom Hanks an Oscar nomination. That's literally the only reason this exists. There's really nothing else that they're trying to do with this film. Um, and it just doesn't really look all that great to me. I don't really think the premise is all that interesting. I know it's based off of a uh, foreign film called, I believe it was called a man called Ove. Um, and it's an, it's just like, why do we need this to exist? I've heard amazing things about that movie. Um, I don't think this, this film is really going to be anything all that different. It's another like very unnecessary, like American adaptation. Uh, yeah, this doesn't really look that great to me at all. I want to be excited, but overall, I think this looks very, very mid, if I, if you ask me. Um, I don't know. This one seems like it, it could be fun, but it also could just be very like just cheesy, corny. Yeah. Maybe very simple, but like obviously Tom Hanks is a great actor. Oh, yeah. Like he usually like, kills it and like all of his roles but um I, don't, I mean i am actually pretty excited for it um it seems like it could be very like wholesome and fun but also very simple basic but um i mean th the story doesn't look super interesting but it still looks fun uh hopefully it's good i don't have the highest expectations but i'm still excited to see it yeah, this one, I don't really have any interest in, to be honest. Like, I, yeah. I understand it's, like, supposed to be, like, a different role for Tom Hanks, but it's really not even that interesting of one, to be honest. So, no. um, yeah. Tim Hanks, what a man. <laughs> and shout out to Swedish people for being Swedish. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, we love, we love the Swedish people. Um, but, oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Man, Man we called Otto. We also love Swedish fish. Yes, yes, we do. If you're looking forward to a man called Otto, it comes out on December 25th. Um, I, I hope it turns out to be something good, but I'm not really feeling it much at all. But now we get to the last movie we will ever discuss in a movie preview. Oh my god. <laughs> the last duel. Um, this, no, that came out last year. Um, <laughs> the last movie we will ever discuss. Don't ruin the moment, Henry. This is a big deal. This is a big deal here. The last movie we're talking about is, of course, the next film. Mac and cheese! Don't ruin it, Violet. The last movie is White Noise. Would you like that protein? That stuff causes cancer in laboratory animals, in case you didn't know. Either I chew gum or I smoke. What are these children, yours? That's mine from Wives 1 and 3. There's Babette's from Husband 2. Wilder is ours. We're each other's fourth. Life is good, Jack. I hope it lasts forever. Let's watch a sitcom or something. No! no. Okay, so... So, 
Yes. So White Noise, this of course is uh, the next film from Noah Baumbach, who usually is known to do like a lot more like, you know, coming of age and like dramedy type films, but he's really kind of go switching gears here, doing a much different kind of film. This is much more of this like black comedy film um, that also has this like apocalyptic feel to it. And Honestly, I really like what I'm seeing from uh, the trailers here. I think this looks like a very different kind of movie. You have this professor of sorts, and uh, he, you know, his whole home is like torn asunder because of this cataclysmic event that ends up happening. And it's kind of like, what are we going to do now? Um, really strong cast, you know, Adam Driver, Greta Gerwig, uh, Rafi Cassidy, Andre Benjamin, you know, that alone has me excited. Don Cheadle as well in this movie, Jody Turner Smith. Uh, that alone has me very excited, but also just Noah Baumbach. I appreciate the fact that he is stepping out of his comfort zone a bit. He's trying to do something a bit different with this movie. And because that I've heard kind of divisive things about this one, some people have said it works. Some people have said it's a little too different from what he's done, but I really like what I'm seeing from this. It looks very quirky. It looks very different. And I, I think it has the potential to be a very special kind of film. I think this is one that's really going to, uh, go under people's radars and it's going to hopefully Netflix gives this like some kind of promotion because they don't know how to promote movies these days. I hope they give this one some kind of good promotion because it is like their last movie of the year. And hopefully it turns out to be a very successful film for them because I, I think this one has a lot of potential. Anything Noah Baumbach does, I get excited for, but this just looks really different from what he's done. And that alone is very intriguing to me. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this film. This one actually looks pretty interesting, too, actually. Um, the cast looks really good, too, so like, I'm actually pretty excited for it. Uh, and, I mean, the story looks really, like, it looks kind of, like, intriguing, but it also looks very, like, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I don't know what word. <laughs> anyway, but... Um, Will you figure out that word? It's okay. But, um... I don't know. This movie just looks really interesting. Um, didn't we hear about it like a couple months ago or something? I think so. I don't know. Yeah, because I thought we talked about it on another preview. No, that was a different movie. Oh, okay. I don't know I what movie like... you're thinking of, but that was not this I don't movie. know, but I thought, I swear I thought we talked about this. No, but we didn't. It, um, it looks interesting. I'm excited. I hope it's good. Uh, I don't have ton to say but um this is just another one that like for being the last film of the year i hope it's a good one and not just like really shitty but we'll see <laughs> yeah so i actually don't know that much about this one i'm kind of keeping a blind for this one but i love no bomb back i love the cast of this one i'm gonna shout out to andre benjamin and i actually am seeing this one in theaters in a few days actually so i'm looking forward to that um which i know kevin was very happy for me um and uh yeah so that's that that's that, 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 that's that kevin yeah that is that yeah yeah this noah bombach is great the writer of madagascar 3 oh yeah <laughs> we got yes, madagascar. Driver, greta gerwig don Cheadle, andre three stacks and I think A24 is actually a co-producer on this one. Yeah, great. they are. It's interesting. So, yeah, I'm very interested in what this is. Like yeah, uh, so if you're looking forward to White Noise, uh, it does come out on December 30th on Netflix, or it is in uh, theaters currently uh, in some places. Uh, if, you're, if your name is Violet, it is in theaters right now. So, yeah, um, that's something to definitely get excited about. Comes on December 30th, and... With that, that's it. That is the last movie we will be talking about um, on the movie preview. Uh, just, just to, just to get sentimental here for a bit. I mean, this is a really like big deal. This has been one of the most like you know uh, constant segments on my channel. I've done this literally since its heyday. So the fact it's ending is a pretty big deal to me. But if I'm being real, it's something that I feel like I just have not put enough effort into lately. And I think 
the movie preview existed around a time where I had a lot more time in my life and I was able to put that time in and I was able to get it done a lot quicker. And I, I just don't really have that time anymore. And that that's the reality is that I just don't really have that time in the way that I used to. And so there's no reason for me to continue doing it when I, I just don't really have the time to, to put that effort into. And I'm always someone who says like, if something becomes work and you're not enjoying it, that is a sign to stop. And that's exactly why the movie preview is ending when it is, because at this particular point, it's more something that I kind of felt like I had to do. It's not something that I necessarily wanted to do. And so that's why I decided to end it um, when I did, because I've always enjoyed doing these and recently it's kind of felt it's kind of felt a little bit more like work and i feel like that's a point where it's like yeah you should probably stop and that's why this is uh wrapping up um when it is but i do think we ended off on a pretty good note um i'm excited i'm happy with the films that we did talk but i think we had a really strong run uh in the years that we did but the reality is i just simply do not have time for these anymore and that's why this is you know concluding um when it is but i'm very happy that it is um ending now um if anyone wants to give uh their final thoughts before we, we wrap things up here violet i'm sure you have a lot to say in particular because you've been here you know since the beginning follow fucking look. um so yeah no it's damn that's you know it's just crazy just like how much time yeah. passes by and that we're, mm-hmm. that it's like 2022 and this is the end um, but yeah, thank you for having me on. I forgot the airs. Thanks for agreeing to my really stupid idea a few years ago. Let me do it by myself for a bit. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I'm just not really sure what else to say. It's just like I feel like I said I've said everything I wanted to. I think you for having me on. And to everyone who has supported me via these movie previews and via Kevin's channel, you know, thank you very much. And sports really appreciate it. And uh, with that, I am out. Woo! It's it's always been amazing having you on. I, I I fuck around with you a lot and I tease you and things like that. But generally, it's always great to to have you on and hear your your insight and just your your overall effort you put into this. My, my albeit, barely I barely when I have insight on these, <laughs> albeit little effort, but still funny effort. Yeah, and I, I that's yeah. something that I do really appreciate. Um, and then uh, Ali, I know you haven't been around that long when it comes to these movie previews. But is there anything you want to say before we wrap things up here? Um, I just always enjoyed being on because like i was i'm able to talk about movies with you and it's just always super fun and yes hit me up on twitter and letterbox alley cat xo um and then hit me up for instagram and everything else <laughs> i'm always here to just chat and make friends and it's always been super fun being a part of this and it's just an honor to be a part of the last one as well and yeah even if i have a cold it's still always <laughs> just special and fun yes we love having you on uh henry anything anything you want to say before we we wrap things up here it's the end of an era it's crazy yeah. um, we've been doing stuff you know where to find me follow huge film guy on letterboxd stream ferris bueller's big day off on paramount plus oh yeah and go see family camp <laughs> <laughs> a movie right. i've definitely watched for sure all right and yeah avatar 2 is gonna eat all our asses at megaplex theaters imax that's what they get for the moon age daydream shit i i don't know what you just said but honestly that was a very profound way to to wrap this up uh no in all seriousness thank you guys for watching this uh over the years i know like i said these last couple years I admittedly have not put the effort in that I did at one point, and I do want to apologize for that. But again, I wanted to wrap things up before things got, you know, before this became a segment that was just not what it used to be. And I think, you know, this one in particular, you know, really just felt like the old days to me. This was like when I used to just kind of like fuck around with my friends and we would talk about different movies and things like that. And that's something that I always just really enjoyed doing. So it was really great to get to do uh, one last ride of these. But with that said, that really is it when it comes to uh, the movie preview. Um, is there ever going to be a variation of this again? Maybe at some point, maybe if I ever get more time in my life, uh, you know, maybe I will find a way to do something similar. But what the movie preview is, 
this is the end of that. Uh, eventually, again, like I said, maybe I will find something different to do. But what this used to be, this is the last time you will see a segment quite like this. Uh, but with that being said, that's it for this video for the last time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys. He was going to heaven with your shelf. Thank you all for supporting over the years. And uh, we'll see you guys in my next video. Also support Ali and I on Conversation with Kelly and support us on uh, our Org Applause Survivor as well. It's oh, also, we will be talking about the last four episodes of Survivor soon. <laughs> yes, yes. So look forward to all of that. Um, you can support Henry and Violet on things as well. Um, yeah. Wow, um, things. Thank you. Violet's music. Love Thanks. Violet's music. <laughs> my, um, my amateur ass music. Yes, we love Violet's music. Uh we love we love Henry just being cracked generally. We just we really <laughs> mixtape coming him. soon. Mixtape yes. coming with the bars. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but uh that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying at this point. You guys know I ramble on and on forever. And before this gets to ramble, too ramble, popular, ramble. Uh, I am going to go ahead and, and wrap this up. Face. Thank you for all for watching throughout the years. Uh, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>